Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today, we got a bit of a Blender double header. Earlier on today, I reported on Blender uh, Beta 3.1 and Alpha 3.2 releases over the weekend. And today, we have another release. This one is a new tool from Blender Studio called Watchtower. Now, I've witnessed better names myself in the past, but hey, we'll go with Watchtower. What you're going to see here, this one came from Blender Studio. Now, if you do not know, Blender Studio is part of Blender, and this is the part of Blender that basically battle tests Blender. They do a number of open films plus training materials, etc. The entire idea is dog fooding. So you use Blender in a production environment to try and anticipate the needs that real world people would have. And they've done this through uh, releasing a number of different films. The most recent one was Sprite Fright, and that's what today's tool was created for. Watchtower was created created to work for Sprite Fright, uh, but could potentially be used in your own project. Now, they've made a number of other films in the past. Uh, Agent 37, for example, Tears of Steel, but probably the two most famous are Big Buck Bunny and Sintel. You've no doubt seen these guys used before, even if just in benchmarks because they're open source projects. Uh, but they're open source film projects that really kind of push Blender to the limits and to identify new needs, new tools, etc. Uh, and today we've got that one tool from it, the Watchtower. Now, i got to keep in mind, Watchtower is probably not for the majority of you. It's more for film management, I suppose we would say. Uh, it's a visual film production tracking tool, helps visualize the status of a short film episode or film sequence, and unpack as much information as needed down to the duration of a shot and assets used in it, all in the space of one screen. Uh, so it was used, you know, created for Sprite Fright. There is a live demo. That's what we're going to be checking out today. Uh, it's got a grid view with grouping and filtering tools, detailed view uh, displaying sh uh, shot or asset details, timeline showing individual shots as well as task statuses. Uh, uses Zo on the back end, or you can write your own uh, JSON back end to integrate with your own task management software or whatever. Uh, and it is free software, open source, under the GPL v3 license. So let's go ahead. We'll check out that live demo. So you can see it right here. It's organized by a timeline, like so. Uh, so you can see the film. As we advance through it, it jumps to the various different parts of the film. Uh, you can find details of it, the number of tasks that were at that particular frame, uh, the number of assets that were used in that particular shot. Uh, you can see you can also jump to individual shots, like so. Um, you can also do it based off down here, you're seeing status. Now this is completely done. So everything here is green lighted, it's been finished. So let's say we were tracking on uh, effect shots, we could come down here, you see where that effect shot was, it'll automatically jump to that sequence over here. Or I can filter down here and say, okay, I just wanna see the effect shots, and it's gonna filter down to those individual frames. Now you're seeing the status of each displayed as a dot. I could also do it as a stripe or a heat map, now, everything is done, so you're just going to see green lines. But if you were still working on the project, you would obviously have uh, different statuses going on, you know, red, orange, yellow, whatever color coding you're using. Uh, but dots work pretty straightforward on the whole, although personally, I actually like stripes. You can also have uh, different people assigned to different tasks. So if we zoom in on one of these, you're actually going to see there's a little picture in the corner of uh, who the actual individual is. Uh, it kind of doesn't show up that well right here. But uh, the other thing we can do is we can come over here and we can do this current sequence. So here you can see it a little bit better. So you can see the person who was assigned to this particular task. In this case, it's all one actual person. Now this one seemingly didn't get done. I don't know why. Uh, for effects, it's not tracking accordingly. But another neat thing we can do, so let's go back here. Instead of just filtering down effects, we'll do all tasks and we'll go back here to the entire timeline like so. We can also track the assets used. So let's come down here in the assets. You can see a variety of different assets. So for example, um, backpack. I click the backpack and then you can see here in the timeline, we can see the scenes in which the backpack was used. So you can see there's the shot, there's the backpack in the scene. Again, different shot, there's the backpack and different shot and there's the backpack. So you can uh, track down various different um, assets where they're used in the project, if they're used in the project. So let me just try and find another one. Oh, I think I'm doing a multiple select of some kind here. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Oh, I'm filtered down by a certain category. Anyways, you can see, so you can track things based on their assets or uh, again, by the shot. Another thing you're supposed to be able to do is group things. So I can group, so right now it's chronological ungroup, just basically as the film happened. You should also be able to do it by sequences. So you can see the variety of different sequences here, the intro, groove, village, and so on. Only problem is that this 
kind of just gives an error. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're not gonna demonstrate that today, but that is the idea behind Watchtower. It gives you like a kind of a single page status, project status view of the project that you are currently working on. Again, Zo on the back end for this data, but you can also hook it up using a JSON API to whatever kind of project tracker you've got. Um, it kind of gives you like a dashboard view of what you're working on. Uh, single project here, but you could have multiple projects that you are tracking accordingly. Or again, you can go through things shot by shot, sequence by sequence, or again, individual uh, areas that, that are broken down over here. You can filter down by them right here. So if I was only interested in the current sequence, which is night time or here village. So I could break it down, show just the ones in that particular sequence. And if I wanted to just see the status for the lighting effects, I can see them, it'll filter down. You can see that the results for each one. So let's say we did it instead for the effects shots. This is the only effects shot. You can see that it's done. You can see the person who's assigned to it. And that's about it. So that is the entire idea behind Watchtower. Again, this is web-based. It was actually written using Vue, which is a JavaScript framework. If you want to go ahead and check it out yourself, basically you have to clone it and host it yourself. Um, it is an open source project. It is hosted up on GitLab. It's under the same license as Blender itself, which is a GPL v3, which really restricts what you can do with the source code. Basically, if you're working on this, you're keeping it GPL v3, and you're contributing your changes back to the community. Uh, otherwise, that you can use it commercially or whatever. You just you, you've got a lot of limitations on how you deal with the source code under the GPL license. Just so do be aware of that. Um, it's not as flexible or uh, as open as, say, uh, the MIT license or the Zlib license or the Apache license, et cetera. There are some definite like, caveats with working with the source code from GPL v3 license that you should be aware of before going in, but I'm not going to get into them in this particular video. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is Blender Studio's most recent tool release, uh, Watchtower. Uh, again, uh, probably not that useful to a lot of you, but it probably just something to be aware of in case you're working with this kind of project in the future. It may be of some interest to you. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.